What's going on everybody, this is me Alex, and in today's video we're going to take an in-depth look at Google's newest flagship, the Nexus 5. Finally, we have an Android handset that deserves the Nexus name. The Nexus 5 is fast, gorgeous, and stocked with plenty of features including LTE and it's the device for showing the true power of the Google Universe and the Android operating system. And at $349 for the 16GB model or $399 for the 32GB model at the Play Store is about $250 less than other top tier flagship smartphones. It's a great deal whether you're on a budget or not and whether you're an Android fan or not. Yes, with the fast Snapdragon 800 processor, a sharp 1080p touchscreen, and a contempt 2300mAh battery, there's a lot to like about the Nexus 5 even if you never have to get past the main menu. But it's really the Android 4.4.4 KitKat operating system that we're here to see. Though not long on flashy new features, KitKat brings an even deeper integration with Google's expanding array of services and a promise to end the age-old scourge of Android fragmentation. Still, at that price, sometimes it makes it difficult to judge the Nexus. Is it a top tier phone for cheap or a mid-range device that's barely souped up with great innards? Do its variable camera and relatively dim screen get a pass because it's a $400 handset after all? Or should I be expecting better from a Google flagship? And it's a flagship, much more so than the Nexus 4 and even the Galaxy Nexus War, but pinning it down further is difficult. This phone features really high-end specs. Featuring a Snapdragon 800 CPU clocked in at 2.3 GHz, Adreno 330 graphics, and 2 GB of RAM make it really hard to pass up. Unfortunately, this phone only comes with 16 or 32 GB of non-expandable storage. That means that you cannot insert an external SD card like you could with most other Android phones. However, you want to consider it one thing's for certain. The phone specs are indeed high-end, and its reliable performance further bolsters its appeal, despite its flaws. For what it's worth, the Nexus 5 is the best unlocked phone on the market, period. Once again, Google's latest Nexus retains a familiar minimalistic aesthetic. However, with the straighter edges and sharper curves, it looks more slightly and austere than its predecessor. The gaming performance on this Nexus 5 isn't bad at all. With those Adreno 330 graphics to back up all the performance and 2GB of RAM, make it gaming, enjoying, and very pleasurable compared to other Galaxy Nexuses and other phones right now in the market with lower graphics CPUs. Through my tests of multiple games and multiple benchmarks, I achieved an FPS of around 60 frames per second at a steady rate. With the Adreno 330 graphics and 2GB of RAM, it is a pleasurable specs for any game handled right now out on the Play Store. I have tested Asphalt 2, run a Quadron test score and got around 7640 and got multiple test scores on this phone that achieved closer to a Samsung Galaxy S5 being a better smartphone. However, if you do not want to dish out you know, close to $1000 for a Samsung Galaxy S4 unlocked like on T-Mobile, you can definitely go for this because it will be an excellent equivalent, however it won't be the same as the S4 or the S5 but will be definitely better than any other smartphone that you can purchase today. The Nexus 5 is a great looking phone, with its sharp edges and like for instance instead of the display sloping off downward at sides like the Galaxy Nexus like before, it cuts off sharply at the corners and gives this minimalistic sleek design look and especially this black version right here. In my opinion there is no reason to overclock this phone at all, only if you are completely a, an idiot and want to void the warranty from Google, go right ahead, I'm not telling you to do it, I'm not telling you not to do it, but it's definitely a reason to try to stay away from it because this phone performs amazingly and has no problems whatsoever trying to keep any of the performance up on the upside because through my testing there has been no lag at all. Sporting the biggest baller screen yet in relation to past Nexuses, the phone has a 4.95 inch Corning Gorilla Glass 3 display, keeping up with its competitors like the Samsung Galaxy S4 and the HTC One. The Nexus 5 touchscreen has a 1920 by 1080p pixel resolution at 445 pixels per inch. In my opinion, this screen is baller. It is possibly one of the sharpest screens I've ever seen in one of the mid-range prices smartphones and is the best screen and touch capacitive touchscreen that there is out on the market right now for $450. 
The 4.95 inch screen takes up most of the phone, but the device measures 5.43 inches tall and 2.72 inches wide. It's thinner and lighter than the prior model at 0.34 inches thick and 4.95 ounces. But as I mentioned before, on the front you get a stunning 1080p display at a pixel density of 445 pixels per inch. That is plenty enough to watch your Nexus movies and all of the Google movies that you download, as well as Netflix. On the top, you have a stunning 1.3 megapixel front facing camera, along with a speaker grill, sort of indented, and on the white model, you have it's white, so it does give a nice contrast ratio, but in the black model, it's just all black, and overall helps it give a nice stealthy look. On the bottom, all you have is one notification light right in the middle. Since these do not have on off screen buttons, they are on screen, which in my opinion have the best feature yet. On the back of the phone, you get a nice rubberized, texturized, flat appeal with the Nexus in the horizontal view, which is, in my opinion, the favorite, just like the Nexus 7, which is also indented and carved in there that give it a nice texture when holding it in your hands. The black matte material finish is very nice, even though it does leave a lot of fingerprints, but if you stick it on with a, a case, it should be nice. Since this is phone manufactured by LG, you do get some LG branding. Along on the top, you have your 8 megapixel CMOS sensor camera, which does have image stabilization, which is why this camera is so large. On the bottom of the phone, you have three items. On the left, you have one speaker grill, which is the main speaker. In the middle, you have the micro USB for charging and transferring data off of your device. And on the right, you have just an extra speaker grill, which doesn't act as anything because if you cover that up, no sound gets covered at all. This does remind us of one device like the Apple iPhone 5S in which on the top of the phone you have a microphone along with our 3.5mm headphone jack that are used for microphone output and headphone output that you can stick any 3.5mm headphone jack on there. On the right hand side you have two little buttons or one button but uh, they are two little slots. The left hand side features a slim card slot which is how you eject and inject your SIM along with our ceramic button for a mute or mute screen so you can turn off the screen anytime you want to on this here i would prefer it if the thing was switched with the volume rocker if this was on the left hand side because i do tend to hold my phone in my left hand but the button is in ceramic that's why it looks different however i really do like that touch because it does hold up to different stocks on the left hand side you have your volume rocker which is one ceramic button at all giving no texture which I really like because it likes to keep the slim slide or button of this phone and likes to keep it really slim and makes it look stealthy. The phone has a nice feel it's very smooth and it's nice to push and the buttons are very tactile themselves. The camera does stick out a little, but if you have that covered with a case you should be fine and it shouldn't get scratched at all considering that it is Gorilla Glass 3. Using my camera was a pleasurable experience due to the fact that it does have a full 1080p CMOS a sensor 8 megapixels along with full 1080p at 30 frames per second video recording capabilities which feature amazing sound and crystal clear audio which I cannot believe that this is possibly the best phone with the best microphone out on the market today. Featuring a 8 megapixel CMOS sensor this phone can capture amazingly quality good pictures in low light. And at 1080p video at 30 frames per second, you get crystal clear video along with amazingly clear audio for your phone. It almost sounds as if you have an external microphone plugged in. The audio may not be best like the voiceover mic or anything else, but it does do a great job at experiencing this phone. Now to activate the camera, of course, there's the standard way of just unlocking your phone and then simply going right over to your camera app. Another way is to go to the lock screen and slide left, but this is a bit hard since you do have to sort of slide and touch the camera icon. Then you have the option here to just go home and you can simply just launch the camera off of there. When opening up the camera, you're greeted with a whole bunch of options, but they are all hidden after, so you have to be quick to select them or reselect them when you have to launch the camera app again. To snap the picture, it is a bit slowly. It takes about two seconds to snap that image. The reason was because I had HDR mode on. However, there is no need for that since I am just filming on a piece of wood and on a table. This camera takes crystal clear images depending on what kind of lighting you have. And you also have a timer option choosing from 3, 10, or no timer at all. On the right of that, you have a grid toggle on or off, on or off. And all the way on the right, you have the HDR mode plus on or off. 
However, that does depend because you have to have it HDR or HDR plus depending on what color scenes you want and how much color saturation you choose from. On the right of the HDR, you have your flash toggle from flash off, on, or auto. And all the way on there, you have your other toggle for the front facing camera on the left hand side. That is pretty cool because this does take relatively good images and it does give a nice color saturation, possibly probably even better than the front mode but without the HDR mode on or off. If you notice, when you turn the phone on or just move it a little bit, the camera flips into landscape mode. That could be a bug and just could be simply fixed through the Google Play Store. Nothing big, but what you have to do is swipe down from the top to access and close your camera because since it is in full screen mode, and all you do is tap to focus and shutter. While recording video, you can take the pictures. And here in the gallery, just swipe to the left in landscape mode. You have the option to go ahead and share the image on multiple social media sites, such as add to Dropbox if you have that enabled, Bluetooth, Drive, email, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Instasize, all those things you want to. Better than iPhone and surely better than any other iPhone, iP iPad that I've ever tried out there. If you swipe to the left, you have the option for disabling your photos. However, this does disable your camera app, so you have to launch back into your home screen and then relaunch your camera application. If you swipe in from the left, you have five different options. Photosphere, panorama, lens blur, which is how you get a DSLR, camera, and of course, video mode. As I mentioned before, this is full 1080p video at 30 frames per second to provide close to clear video and amazingly clear audio as well. To capture the video, all you do is just tap the focus and then double tap to take the image. It does give full recording capabilities of images as well while recording the video. When I first read about this phone, I could not believe how much information and technology they packed into one small tiny body of this phone. This phone is available on only some carriers, AT&T and T-Mobile. Not available on Verizon or Sprint unfortunately, but it's definitely recommended that you definitely purchase T-Mobile instead of AT&T due to the fact that they would offer better prices. This phone comes in two colors, black or white, or people like to call it Panda White or Stormtrooper White, which I don't really understand. The last test I ran on this phone was the speed test, and I'm going to run it again here. It was 20 is my ping last time, but this time my ping is 24 milliseconds, and my download speed is bursting with 50 megabits. Close to 50 is what I paid for, but I get around 45 in my area of the Bay Area here, and I get an upload speed of normally around 5 meg uh, megabits per second. But it's definitely worth it due to the fact that I post a lot of videos to YouTube, and I definitely need the speed down here. As you see right there, I got a speed of 46.97 download and upload speed. I got 6.82 megabits per second. That is great speed for my area here and everywhere else where I live. This phone is great Android starter phone. If you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure to drop a like. Subscribe to my channel if you guys already have not done so. Just stay tuned to latest and greatest tech here on HD Alex Films. See you guys in my next video. Peace.